Modern oceanography's first images of the seabed from the 19th century were drawn from a collection of points obtained by dropping a weighted instrument from a ship. The deep sea. Before modern oceanography, in the West, the seabed was believed to be flat and lifeless. Sonar technology perfected during the Second World War expanded our understanding of the seabed. Sonar helped render an image of the deep sea in three dimensions. The first maps of the Atlantic and the Indian Ocean's rifts, ridges and plateaus helped validate the theory of plate tectonics and continental drift barely a decade before humankind set foot on the moon. The deep sea. We still know less about the ocean floor than we know about the moon or Mars. Around 500 people have gone to space, while only three have reached the ocean's deepest point. Today, the mapping of the seas is done from a vertical axis that combines geostationary satellites and submissibles. The deep sea is a new frontier. It is only recently that we have begun to contact its inhabitants, forms of life utterly alien to us at the surface. The technology that assists us in this process has extended vertically both into the atmosphere and into the bottom of the ocean. This is our alien planet, but it is not a flatland anymore. The United Nations have declared the 2020s to be the decade of ocean science for sustainable development. But the International Seabed Authority, which regulates and supervises exploration of the ocean floor in international waters, has already leased concessions, despite the fact that legislation is still being drafted. The deep sea is a new frontier of resource extraction. Deep sea mining companies aim to extract minerals and metals such as manganese, cobalt, gold, copper, iron and other rare earth elements from the seabed. Hydrothermal vents, resembling small underwater volcanoes, were discovered in 1977. Despite water temperatures reaching up to 350 degrees Celsius, a single vent can harbor unique endemic species. These animals can convert toxic chemicals into energy, revealing themselves to be complex life forms. Some microbiologists see hydrothermal vents as central to research on the origins of life on Earth. Hydrothermal vents are just one of various types of geological formations where deep sea mining is set to take place. Other targets are the cobalt-rich seamount crusts and the polymetallic manganese nodules spread along the ocean floor. The deep sea is a new frontier of resource extraction. The heavy machinery and the dredging techniques applied in mining will create plumes of unpredictable consequences and deeply impact underwater ecosystems formed over millennia. The deep sea. This is our alien planet, but it is not flatland anymore. From Papua New Guinea to New Zealand, Tonga and Fiji in the Pacific, to the Portuguese Azores Islands in the Atlantic, advocacy groups are raising awareness about the insufficiency of regulation and the lack of transparency 
in the negotiation of deep-sea mining concessions. 